Okay. Dr. Grances' class from the University of Houston has joined my class from Indiana University in thinking about possibilities for upskilling, reskilling their writing. And it is week 12. It's the right time to write. If you're in a class on writing, you're getting near the end of the semester. For my class, they're writing dissertation proposals. And so I thought, what? What better than, than to have people who, have, who are young in the field, who have published a fair bit along the way and are, have accomplished a lot, have, have overcome many challenges in writing, not only their dissertations, but post-dissertations. And Susie's probably been out the longest of anyone. She's getting an early career alumni award from Indiana University or has, and they haven't held the ceremony yet. I don't know, they'll probably, hold on an airplane somewhere. I don't know where they're gonna hold it. But anyway, she's accomplished, she's published a lot. And so it's, it, we have a bunch of people here who have been in the throes of an early career and been successful at it. And so Susie had the idea of doing a presentation for the Graduate Student Association at AECT. And all the people I invited back are the, those folks that were on that panel. Uh, and so Tiffany Romans at Kennesaw State in northern part of Atlanta. And then we've got uh, Dabe Lee, who's also at Kennesaw State. And then it's also in the northern part of Atlanta because she's there because there's good Korean food. And we have Yul Ha, her other half partner, who's working from Iwa Women's University because he likes Korean food too. And I had the privilege of speaking to his great class last week. Uh, and then we have Susie, who's all alone in Texas, with Alan's in Texas. Susie and Alan are in Texas. And as some of you all are, Stephanie might be from Texas. And Judy, it looks like she's from Texas. Hey, who's all from Texas? Raise your hands. So can we get a sense of what? Well, we live in, in Texas. We you mostly live, live in Texas, although live. Melanie is not in Texas. Where are you, Melanie? I'm in Dayton, Ohio. I was recently in, in Texas though at U of H. So uh, this is a recent move for me. Well, the Dean there is a good friend at the University of Dayton, uh, Ellie Carr-Chelman. Uh, so are, are you working in, in Dayton? I'm actually at the uh, United States Air Force School of Aerospace I, Medicine. I, so I'm, I'm on their military base, but um, we definitely, we work with Wright State the most, I would say. Yeah, you do. I, I know a lot of folks there, there's a lot of contracts with IU with folks at, at, at that Air Force base. Judy, what city? In Houston. Houston. Stephanie, what city? Houston too. Daniel, what city? Galveston. Galveston, oh Galveston. Leah, what city? Houston. Houston, okay, Houston proud. Brooke? Uh, born and raised in Houston. Ashley? Houston, uh, but originally New Jersey. <laughs> Kareen? Houston. Dan, uh, Alan? I'm in Houston. I know. I had yes. you had you have you had <laughs> at least one of member of my class is in Houston. So Yaniv is in Mount Monterey working at the Defense Language Institute. And uh, Rob's in IUPUI in Indianapolis and just got a teaching award tonight. There's a big round of applause for Rob. And I we had a, a toast with the 200 year anniversary of IU wine glasses. So if anyone wants to toast one last time to Rob before we get started, three cheers to, to Rob for a great job as an instructor there. Thank you. I'm going to go refill this wine glass now. I, mine's getting low too. Could you help me out? <laughs> and the bottle's empty. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I have to open a new one. Um, so while, while Tiffany's presenting, I'm going to open a new bottle for everybody. Uh, <laughs> Merve's going to come over to my place and get a glass. She's not too far then away. Then you'll crank out like three articles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know me. Uh, Khadija, welcome tonight. I don't hear from you too much. Say hi. Thank you. Thank you. 
Looks like your internet is not doing so well tonight. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. All of That's you. better. What oh, city are you from everyone. in Saudi Arabia, Khadija? Um, Riyadh, the capital. Riyadh. Okay, good. So we got some diversity here. So I think Tiffany's going to go first. I want to just say this will be a, 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 a kind of a rapid session. We've got 15 minutes for each person. Tiffany will go a little longer than 15. I'll hold up the five minute sign when you get to 15, Tiffany. And then I'll comment for two minutes after each presenter. So there'll be four presenters. Um, you, have you decided what order after Tiffany, Susie? I have not. <laughs> should, we, should we get some boy girl thing going on? So Tiffany, then Yol, then maybe um, Dabe, and then you be the anchor person. How does that sound? Sounds great. Okay. Tiffany. All right. Should I go? Because I want to. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. take too long. I'm going to share my screen. And is that and that sorry? Right? Is that okay? I put the link to the um, presentation over here. And I'm going to be on slide seven. Is where I'm going to head. And I can't speak to any other slides. <laughs> and I will post everyone's slides afterwards on my end in, okay. in Dropbox. So great. OK, thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I am um, at Kennesaw State, and I'll keep I'm just an assistant professor in the instructional technology department, although we are now the School of Instructional Technology and Innovation. So we had an upgrade on our title. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, I'm coming with gifts today. So I'd hope for when I'm speaking that maybe you can go ahead and bookmark things and click on links. Anything um, that looks like a hyperlink is in fact a hyperlink. And one of the things that I think is the best thing that you can do with either with your cohort, whether it's in Houston, um, or in Indiana is to try to find a core group of people that you can have accountability with when it comes to writing. Um, and I wanted to present to you my virtual writing space where I have a group of people that we do check-ins. We just simply say, what are our goals for today? How many minutes do we spend on writing today? Um, and then do we meet our goals for today or not? We also answer questions, what internal resistance we might've faced as well as external barriers progress that we might have made towards personal goals, um, things we might be proud of. Today, by the way, I'll go ahead and give an example. I have a GRA for next year, which is exciting, and so does Dabe. So we found out we're both getting our GRAs that we apply for. And we had um, research teams that we were also funded for. So those were internal awards. Um, so those are my like celebration and cheering. And then comments from peers. So the nice thing is, is that when you have this kind of sharing on your own time, you can come in and then um, give you know kudos to other people or encourage them if they're feeling down. So it's just a nice accountability. And I have made one for all of you and we will, um, I have the link later, I'll show it to you, but we will spend a little time today at least putting in your goal for tomorrow and maybe bookmarking it. So we'll try to Keep it interactive. Um, another thing you should have access to, just so you're aware, is the National Center for Faculty Diversity and Development. Um, I think I swapped the name there. But your universities, and Susie, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, pay for institutional memberships. And um, every semester they do a 14-day kind of boot camp where you can do very, very similar to what we just said in a much better user interface of setting the goals. Did you meet your goals for today? they give you stars. I don't have stars on my spreadsheet, but my spreadsheet is free. <laughs> and for those who are writing dissertation proposals, they have a dissertation success curriculum. And if you're aware of this, that's totally fine. So I won't spend too much time on it. But um, the great thing about it is that it leads you through kind of week by week over 12 weeks, setting you, your, you know, success for when you're working alone, because alone, working alone can feel kind of isolating. Um, but I highly encourage you to look at those resources if you're not aware. Again, anything you see is blue, you can link to it and it should open. Um, they have core curriculum, so you can also attend webinars. You know, maybe you feel like you're not able to function because you're experiencing perfectionism. Um, 
and they have community check-ins as well. I will say that I get the most out of this experience of my, my little small group. We come together um, and, and we just do that daily check-in, but there are resources for you. So this is an example of the 12 week curriculum um, for the training modules. In terms of planning, you have to start with a plan. Oh, here we go. This is active webinar time, it's learner engagement. Go ahead and click on this link or you can type it in the bit.ly backslash April 21-right. And you will see that you will pick a column, type in your name, and then simply set up, this is for tomorrow, type in a goal for tomorrow. It can be a writing goal. It could be a teaching goal, ideally writing since this topic is on writing. It can be small, but there's enough columns for everyone. Find your column, go ahead and put it in and we'll just take a second to do that. So one thing in webinars that doesn't happen a lot is getting you doing things. So I can see, I'm gonna go there now and see how many people are there and that you're doing things. It's redirecting me. So hopefully, there we go. Look at these. Merv is working on protocol writing. <laughs> My goal is to be Kurt Vaughn. I think that's a great goal, whoever set that goal. <laughs> Congratulations on your word, by the way, Dr. Vaughn. That is fantastic. And I hope you had a good ch a chat with um, President McRobbie. Let's see how it fills out. And if you highlight this, you'll notice at the bottom, so keep filling in names, just keep going over to the side. There's tabs all along at the bottom, color-coded, because I'm a little bit type of A, that scaffold you through the week, um, and we'll take you through the end of April. So if you, if you bookmark this, and there might only be two or four, you know, two or four people who continually show up. Oh gosh, this is for tomorrow. <laughs> So this is, we're just planning for tomorrow because the webinar is short and I will be cut off because I don't want to talk too long. But yes, yeah, Susie, the ACT proposals are due Wednesday, everyone. So if you haven't yet drafted your proposal or you want to draft another one, they extended the deadline by a week. Qual's presentation, that's a big goal. So you can set, um, just fill this in tomorrow. I'm going to head back. You can keep this open. I'm going to escape and just head back but bookmark it. I love the activity I'm seeing here. That is super fantastic. Okay, additional support groups. So there's something called grad, grad write slack on Twitter. And I hope you're all on Twitter because it is um, really, it's a, good, it's a good one to follow. So if you, if you click here, you can follow them on Twitter and Slack is a, just a really fantastic asynchronous. It's like it was Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams basically is trying to be Slack. Let's be honest. They're just like, they're trying to make it enterprise ready. Great resource. They also have um, to join. You have to send an email. So this is the email address to join it to get into that Slack. But really, what it is, it's a community of grad students who are writing. And if you fall in that category, or maybe you're just nostalgic about the grad school days and you wanna go back, I'm sure they'd let you join, I'm guessing. So we have the email there that you can go, however you wanna multitask as I'm going through. How am I doing on time, Dr. Bonk? Do I have how many minutes? Left. Two minutes. Okay. There's also, if you can imagine a virtual room where you can just go in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because it might be the beginning of the day if you're in Korea and you're just getting going, um, but it may be at night and that's when you also write. You can go to this 24 hour study room with other doctoral students. They're on Twitter. This is the link to the Twitter. This is the link to the actual website. And you just simply register through Eventbrite. The, event, the Eventbrite site is like ongoing for registration. And um, you can just go so that you're with someone in a space while you're working, which I think is really great. So consider, consider going to the um, Eventbrite space. 
And then some other strategies and tips, you probably don't know this, but like, I will ping people when I was in grad school, I would say, hey, do you want to do 25 minutes of writing with me? Okay, I had another friend, she was also trying to finish her dissertation. It might be nine o'clock at night, but we knew that was the time that we could get in at least 25 minutes of writing. And you just get going with one-on-one. -on -one. Um, or scheduling to meet over Zoom and writing. I do this with writing groups during the week as well, where we are together, we're quiet, we check in, we write for 25 minutes, take a five minute break, keep going. And we do this and we have it blocked on our calendars. No one can schedule us during that time. So I think that's important to protect your writing time, however it works for you. Um, and then there's just a few more resources and then I'm done and I'm gonna be quiet. We've got, Write that PhD. You can click on this. It'll take you to the Twitter, um, Twitter one to follow. They just have some good, they'll just post out some good information. You know, like this could help anyone who's on, even if they have their PhD to think about what are some specific research uh, review questions for different types of research. Um, this was another thing of how to create a mind map of focus questions for lit review. Um, that came from that resource as well. So it's a good one to follow on Twitter. I also like um, this, this uh, professor who is in, actually works out of Mexico. He is, um, gives, he has a blog that you can access as well, that you can see the link to the, the website here where he just talks about really good strategies for reading literature, creating annotated bibliographies um, to form strong arguments. So I recommend following him. And then focusing, I think so often, we have a hard time just not being distracted. And so I have a couple of resources I wanna bring your attention to. I, I've been using forest for a while. You, you, plant a, you plant a tree when you start your writing. If you finish your writing uninterrupted, the tree grows. But if you leave the app, you kill your tree. So your forest starts to die. So um, just make sure it's a great little incentive to build a forest helps fight climate change. Um, also, this is the tab timer. Now, if you click this link, I provide you with the ad-free version of this. This slides over and it just has this most beautiful interface for writing on any tab when you need a timer. And I like clean, I'm a purist, I'm a minimalist. So this is, I think, a beautiful interface. So use that resource, it's down here at the bottom too. The hashtag, thanks for your donation with dashes in between. Um, we'll take you to this timer. So that's a gift. And the last thing I think I use is, um, I, I tend to use Dayboard quite a bit, which is just my browser. It's a Chrome extension. It gives you five things that you can, for those who like to just kind of center their day on, okay, what's urgent and important? This was back in October of what was urgent and important. Present at ACT. I guess ACT comes around this time because it's now submit to ACT. Submit my proposal. Um, and you can set block sites where you don't want access. Um, finally, also just turn on, on your, your in focus feature in Word. You'd be surprised how many people don't, aren't even aware that you can just focus and it clears, it makes it look like this, it's gorgeous. So it just, just keeps you from being distracted. And then also extreme action is turning off your Wi-Fi, which sometimes you have to do, or just go to a parking lot and you will find your Wi-Fi is pretty much off your laptop. And I will stop there. Um, feel free to absolutely reach out to me anytime if you have any questions, but you have access to this presentation. It's in the chat and all those links are active. So use them, take them however they can help you. And thank you for letting me speak and I shall listen to all the other Okay, a couple more things. Number one, you have more time. What's one link that you haven't shown us that you need to show us? One thing I haven't shown. Um, the semester plan, I never think it's too late to write a semester plan. So, um, there, there is, well, it's in the National Center for Faculty Diversity and Development, but what it really does is says, okay, let's be true to ourselves in terms of what we want to accomplish. Like if we want to defend our dissertation proposal, working backwards, what does that mean? And you go through those tasks of getting to that end result. So having a chapter three finish includes what tasks or 
um, and you break it down. And it, it, it can be just done with a mind mapping tool of your choice, but I would do that regularly and revisit it. And there's some people that use Trello and sticky notes. Um, uh, you know, even though I was in grad school for a long time, I still have a friend who is not yet finished. <laughs> Lauren, who is using Trello, sticky notes, moving her progress along the way. Um, so I think, I think that's, that's helpful is to think about, um, planning your semester for the summer, especially. Well, my TA here is Merve. She talks about Trello all the time. Yeah. You just mentioned Trello. What is it? What if people don't know it and how Kanban, are you using it? Kanban board. So it's essentially, <clears throat> I don't know if Merve wants to then maybe say it better than I do because I, it's not part of my daily practice, but I think it's a good tool. It's a, it's a way of organizing activities and like project management within groups. Right. And everyone gets a little card and you move in underneath the card is you might store a bunch of links that one goes to, but the top card mm -hmm. tells, you, tells you what that activity is all about. And you move those cards along as you complete them from left to right. And so the instructor can see how, how much progress has been made. Right, Merve? Exactly. And besides, you can uh, work individually or in a crowded group with your friends. You can collaborate. So third thing, Tiffany, what's focus feature in Word? How do you find the focus feature in Word? Is it something easy to find? Yeah, it's under... Uh, let me stop sharing for a second and I'll find it and then I will share it out. But um, the focus feature in Word... Keep in mind, I, 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 last time, I should say this, the last time I presented, I, um, I took up all the time and my presenters didn't have any opportunity to, to speak. So, okay, I'm ready now. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Hold on. This is a report. We were looking at jobs and instructional design. So this is the report you're gonna see. This was part of a work thing that I had to do today. Okay. So it's right there. You'll see in under view, you, if you click on view and you see focus, it'll go like this, which just takes away all the noise. And then you can just see um, some interesting data here. So that's what I said, that's, that's helpful as well. But I think finding, finding those people who are also driven um, in your program who want to do the accountability check-in. Again, the, um, that spreadsheet I gave you, I really want to see who's going to come back tomorrow on April 6th and fill that in. And you get to really know people quite well. Um, I think it's a, it's a nice bonding experience if it works for you, but it's not everybody's strategy. So you just have to find those strategies that I think work for you. Yeah. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I hope I didn't go too fast. No, no, that's good. It's weird right now as we're talking, fireworks are going off in Bloomington. I don't know for <laughs> what. Maybe it's all the awards. So Tiffany the awards. gets an award for a G GRA. <laughs> uh, Dabe gets an award for a GRA. Um, everyone seems to be getting, Rob got an award. I got a little award. And, you know, so tonight's awards night, the banquet night. Um, Merve got a publication. Um, and so... So the timer idea I like too. I like the focus idea, the timer idea, organizing idea, the Trello idea. You have lots of tools and resources. She will share her slides with us. So I have to ask you, are you, would you consider yourself a writer first or a teacher first? Me personally? Yes. Um, I would, I would, ooh. Okay, that answers my second question. Because my second question is, is writing a second secondary to your life or is it primary? And it's not secondary. Uh, so obviously not, and teaching might be primary too. You might have two primary things that you do, but you're, you're really, you've really come up with a lot of interesting ways to make writing more efficient and productive and so forth, so. Well, I have two young, I, when I was in grad school, I had two young children, right? And so I was like, okay, I have to, when they're napping, or I have when they go to bed and, or I have, you have just become very efficient with your time um, when people take your time and you don't know how long it 
I mean, you, and if a child gets sick, you know, what you have planned the next day might just be thrown out the window. So um, I have a balanced research and teaching load in my position. And so I think that's why I like, you know, you always go beyond 100%. But, so um, you're balanced, which means it's 150 percent. Okay, exactly. So actually, yeah, and the service just is like the French have a word gonflé. I feel like my service just went like. Yeah, um, yeah, we hear you there. Um, so, Parama has joined us. She's made number 19. I noted. We don't have 20, so someone go out and recruit one more person so we get to 20. Um, just <laughs> wanted to say. Uh, so thanks for coming, Parama. Uh, again, congrats. And um, it's writing is not just you, it's your community that you're building around you. That's the main point. It's, it's, it's the resources and the tools and the people around you, the environment for writing. We have to move to, to y'all. Okay, uh, hello everyone. So my name's Yol and right now I'm in Korea. So we have a huge uh, time difference. And interestingly, I just uh, started my day and I know you are in the nighttime, but uh, how come I look least lightly <laughs> and active? Well, and you're tomorrow, also... right? You're tomorrow. So you can tell us yeah. who won the NCA tonight, right? You could, you could tell us the score <laughs> so we can make a bet on the game. <laughs> uh, I go for Gonzaga. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Texas people like go for Gonzaga. So, uh, you know, uh, Rob mentioned uh, you all, y'all in Southern English. Actually, that's my first name, how you pronounce my first name. So I use that when uh, I teach uh, others how to pronounce my uh, first name, y'all, and last name, huh? And uh, uh, recently I was teaching in Kansas, Empire State University. And then I moved back to uh, Korea and started my first semester at Ewan Women's University from March. And uh, let me share the screen. I think uh, the link that Tiffany shared has the same slide. Oh, not this one. Okay. Right. So uh, my, my presentation is focusing on the little tips for getting the most publication out of your daily life. So it's getting a kind of bonus present, bonus publication or the side publication uh, on top of your main research agenda and main uh, research publication, okay? And I want to start by the little tips, the little tips. So I know that the writing uh, can be very tedious and not attractive to, especially uh, you are writing your dissertation. So uh, I was trying to uh, make this task of writing as a more pleasant task so that you can have more, I don't know, a little bit more attractive to writing. So it depends on you. It depends on your uh, own uh, taste and preference. But for me, uh, I was using uh, this mechanical keyboard so just the typing sound, I really like the typing sound of this uh, mechanical keyboard. So just the uh, typing activity itself, you make this tedious and boring activity a little bit more uh, pleasant. So I don't know, you can use a uh, uh, focusing app, the music app, I'm using uh, Tide on iPhone, uh, listening to the sound when writing. And you can use other uh, uh, like the music apps or if anything, they can make this uh, writing task more pleasant. And that's, uh, that's a unique tip for writing. And then another uh, tip for the writing uh, in more uh, technical ways that uh, personally I found myself when I was writing and doing this uh, citation, the uh, references. Uh, I, you, you really don't remember every like important result or the context of the literature that you uh, found and read before. So you always uh, have to go back to read uh, some of the uh, content from the literature and then you uh, cite the references. And if you are using a uh, kind of blogging tool like a blogger from Google, you can uh, create a label in blogger or the tagging if you're using other uh, blogging tools. 
And you just create your own uh, short blogging post uh, with the title and you just summarize or you just have an abstract or you summarize a, a little result and the context and using the tag or label, you can create a label related to that specific article. So uh, K-12 or higher education, motivation, self-regulation. And later when you uh, want to find the relevant article that you read before, you go to this uh, blogging tool and they have this uh, sort of filtering by label or filtering by the tagging so that you can filter these results based on your uh, uh, labeling and test. That will save you a lot of time uh, instead of going back to each article and read again uh, what they talk about. Okay, so that's another tip. And then, like I said, uh, I'm focusing on how you get the most out of your everyday life. So from teaching, practice, and service into the publication. Okay. So as a graduate student, uh, like uh, many of you, you have uh, various roles other than being a graduate student, doctor student. So sometimes you teach instructor, associate instructor, or teaching assistant, or uh, you work for the university as an instructional designer, instructional consultant, learning technologies, or you do a uh, graduate assistancy on campus for a uh, different organization. And definitely you are a member of organization like ACT, Graduate Students Assembly. And you are a student and researchers. You have all these different roles uh, while at the same time you are doing your dissertation as a PhD student and how you can turn this everyday experience into publication. And why this is important Okay, so I know some of you have already your own publication, but if not, it's important to get your own publication experience from start to finish as a first author. I know you are a part of the research group, then you are part of this uh, publication from your research group. But as a first author, it's important to get this uh, direct uh, hands-on experience from start to beginning. What's the process of this publication? And also, like I said, make the most out of it. Sometimes the quantity matters. I know you are focusing on your uh, main research agenda and main research focus, but for the purpose of the uh, securing jobs or you never know, sometimes the quantity matters and how you can make the most out of it. Okay, so uh, this is just an example. Uh, it's uh, a journal, it's called Journal of Educational Education for Teaching, JT, and it's a SSDI index journal in teacher education, and they're focusing on international context. So as you can see, if you scroll down, they are uh, editorial and under articles and research articles, basically. And then they have other uh, types in their uh, regular publication, right? Like research in practice and book reviews and then research in progress. So even though you are in the stage of developing your research agenda, like uh, writing a, a proposal, and even though at this stage, you still get a publication out of it. Okay, so they only require to have a thousand word. So when you are developing your research agenda, research studies, you can still submit your progress of the research and your expected outcomes, your uh, desired outcomes and get the publication out of it. And research in practice, when you're teaching, especially uh, with this uh, COVID-19 situation, you uh, kind of tried out uh, different strategies, teaching strategies and anything, uh, unique and new in your practice, but you really don't have any time to delve into the literature, the fine literature and develop your research question and conduct a research study, but you want to share this experience of your teaching in your practice, okay? So you are working as an instructional designer, you are doing a project with your team and you really want to share this idea. And in this case, you can uh, use this research and practice section, which only requires you to submit a thousand word as well. 
Okay, so without just focusing only on your uh, dissertation research, you still have a chance to get the publication out of your other roles as a student and as a teacher and as an instructional designer, relatively easier way just to have a thousand words. Okay. And then uh, here's an example of a tech trend by ACT. Some of you already know, but they have different columns. So as you can see, they have columns for book reviews, even conference planning and graduate member, history, ICT international context, leading matters, rethinking technology and creativity in the 21st century. Okay, that those columns means all this are different publication opportunity. So you are a part of the Graduate Students Association and you help them uh, run this uh, Graduate Students Association event for the ACT conference. And you reflect on your experience and get the publication out of the conference planning. Or you are doing another event within your organization and you get another publication from this uh, graduate member uh, column section. Okay, so you may not know all this opportunity for getting the publication out of your uh, everyday life from different roles. But if you uh, look carefully into this uh, different uh, journals, they have this type of different columns that accept different aspects of the publications. So uh, for example, I was a uh, conference planner for this uh, Korean Society of Education Technology affiliate in ACT last year. And we had this uh, panel discussion and panel discussion as a presentation in conference, but using the panel discussion summary of what we talked about in the discussion, I uh, created a publication opportunity from a tech trend. So you uh, contact the editor of each column, the relevant column, and to see whether they are interested in uh, this type of pu publication. Okay, and how can I find this information? You can set up an alert so that whenever there is a, a, a new information, you get an alert. Okay, so it's a you know, EPRND page, Educational Technology Research and Development. Every journal, their homepage, you get uh, this menu button, sign up for alert. And you can sign up for alert using your email address. So whenever they have new table of contents, new is issues coming up, you get the alert for the table of content. And from the table of content, you get to see uh, what kind of different uh, columns are included in that issue. In that way, you can see uh, different columns. And whenever they have a special issue, which has a relatively easier way for uh, being accepted, then you also get this alert. So British Journal of Education Technology, also the content alert. So it's a TOC alert, table of content alert for the new issues and the special issues. Computers and education, also you can set up an alert. Okay, so if you have a, a list of journals that you have in mind, especially uh, focusing on the field that you are uh, interested in, go to their homepage and set up an alert so that whenever there's a uh, new issues coming up, you get an alert. And by looking at this table of content, you get more uh, information about what different types of publication they are accepting. Okay. And then top tier advisor or faculty on record, which means uh, they always get this type of email from these uh, publishers. They have this uh, different issues coming up, different uh, publication opportunity. And sometimes they have uh, more knowledge about where to contact or where to go with your uh, publication ideas. Okay. And create your own opportunity, which means like I said, whenever you're doing some type of event or uh, other project from your other roles, other than uh, PhD students, think about how you can turn this experience into the publication. 
and you can contact the editor directly and to see if whether they are interested in, in your ideas. Especially as a PhD student, for example, you serve as uh, an officer of this organization and led this event and you get a publication out of your reflection. Or if you are taking seminar courses, right? And based on the topic of the seminar courses, you can suggest to the class, we are doing a seminar for this class on this topic. What about we create an opportunity to make this uh, in-depth deep discussion or result our exchange of ideas into the publication as a series? Then you can contact the editor of this uh, like a tech trend journal and see if they're interested. Okay, so you can actively find this opportunity and for uh, getting the extra publication out of your uh, other roles than just a PhD student. Okay. So you all, we have about a minute or two left. Oh, that's it. That was my last slide. Okay. So excellent timing. <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of comments on this. First of all, we all found out that you're a behaviorist because you like clicking the keys and hearing how it sounds. When I worked at West Virginia or West Bagad Virginia University, the behaviorist, Julie Vargas, the daughter of B.F. Skinner, and B.F. Skinner had his claim to fame here in Bloomington, Indiana, raising his other daughter in the Skinner box. Um, she said, interactivity is when students hit the keyboard. Their research was all about typing, hitting those keys, not the thinking that was you know, happening. That interactivity for them was moving your fingers and they record movements of fingers. So you, you would be a good research assistant for that, for the behaviors. <laughs> I think you'd be a, at least a good research subject out there. You know, maybe maybe you need to write a book. My life is a behaviorist, and just you know, Dabe is agreeing with me over here. She she sees the way you handle the kids and all. You know, uh, <laughs> just kidding. So um, you're absolutely correct that there are different outlets for publications, and some are easier than others. And it's something that I found out if two years ago or a few years ago at a at AERA. The ed researcher, the number one journal in the field, gets very few book reviews. And you would get massive of people reading it if you did a book review for the educational researcher. The problem is you have to have a book that hits a generalized audience, not just a typical IST kind of audience, because they won't pick it. But I know my book on MOOCs and Open Ed in the Global South has the former editor of the ed researchers writing a book review on it and hopes to get it published in it. But any journal, any journal that you, you scan the journals, thank you, Susie, and, and take a look. Not all journals take book reviews, but almost everyone that takes a book review is hard up. They want to, they don't get enough submitted. They do not get enough book reviews submitted. And if you publish a book, scan the journals out there and have your friends do a book review for different journals. I've, I've had six on that book so far. Um, just that's a way to get you, you know, the word out on that or to get, get, get a small... And also the um, Tech Trends History Makers. I got a short two pager in the History major Makers a couple of years ago talking about how to use the videos from AECT, um, the Legends and Legacy videos, just a, just a thought paper. Some distance education, a top journal, SSCI has thought papers. So, you know, that's not an, an easy journal necessarily, but easier than writing a full blown research paper up and, and having to conduct the study, a thought paper. You can have the idea today and by next week and you can be submitting it to a journal and you don't have to wait three years to conduct the darn study and, and get human subjects and all that kind of thing. So look for book reviews, look for thought papers. You said the practice articles in the JET journal. JET stands for Journal of Education. Education in Teaching. In Teaching, okay. I've not used that journal. You have to send me the link to that. I want to add it to my list. So in the chat window, I put my journal list. I have over a hundred journals there. Not all are SSCI, but quite a few are SSCI because I was getting the same questions. Where should I publish? So that list exists. Today I was rejected, the Australasian Journal of Ed Tech, but tomorrow I'll go think about where to resubmit it, you know, and, and so forth. So you have to keep keep thinking, keep, keep plotting ahead. Um, contact the editor, as you all said. 
it's very important if you've got, you know, about, about what special issues are coming. And by the way, don't suggest a special issue on COVID. The world has enough special issues on COVID. Move on to something else. You know, if I, I'm going to throw up if I see another special issue on COVID-19, even COVID-20. So those are a couple of things I wanted to mention. Uh, we need to go to Dabe next, unless someone has a comment or a question for y'all or for Tiffany. Nothing. Let's give you all a round of applause. So, I mean, really, really good. I mean, Tiffany, uh, no, no, we're at Tiffany too, Tiffany too. <laughs> uh, so, Dabe, you want to you wanna wow us and zow us? Well, hello, everyone. I was actually, my first institution was as the tenure faculty was at Sam Houston State University. So I lived in the Woodlands, uh, which is about one hour away from Houston. And my second institution was uh, in Kansas, Emporia State University uh, with y'all, uh, who is my husband. <laughs> we were married at the time when we, um, before we come to Korea, uh, come to the US. And now I'm in Georgia with Tiffany. <laughs> so I'm actually closer to Tiffany. <laughs> To, then to y'all right now. But um, so a pleasure to meet with you, everyone. And I, w I actually wondered what stage you are in terms of your doctoral study. So can you hold your hands, uh, raise your hands if you are at the dissertation stage? Uh, you, you can hold your hands like that or you can raise hand features. So under reactions on, on the bottom panel, under reactions, you can raise a hand as well. Um, uh, Dabe, you mean dissertation proposal or actual collection of data? Every student in my class is at least at dissertation proposal stage. Oh, got it, got it. So Very we should, well, we thank should you. split that up. Between, so who's at data collection phase? Anyone? We're working on uh, chapters one and two. Okay. Okay. So okay, who's at the proposal it. stage in here? We'll be turning. Yaniv, you're at the proposal stage. Raise your hand, please. Alan, yeah, yeah, all you guys. I think you're close and you know, you're writing it up, right? Okay, very good. Well, <laughs> thank you. So let me share my screen. Um, so I will talk about um, journal review process and I'm curious uh, how many of you have submitted a manuscript to the journals? If you can raise your hands uh, by using the raise your hand features in Zoom, that will be very helpful. I'm looking at the participant list. So I know Morsib has a new publication, uh, Rob, Stephanie, Suji, of course. <laughs> okay, so uh, hopefully uh, this review is uh, helpful. So this is a journal review process. So when you submit your manuscript, what happens is it goes to uh, editor. So, and then editor will screen your manuscript and decide whether to send back to the authors if there are some corrections to be made or rejected. So you can get rejected by the editors before the peer review process. And I have a manuscript that has been rejected 13 times, 13. And uh, more than half of it, <laughs> more than half of it was rejected by the editor. But you know, you have to go through a lot of formatting and changing uh, the focus depending on the journal. So it takes a lot of time for you to get prepared for a journal. So it is important to uh, get a right journal because other than that, your time will be, whoop, you are not going to uh, go to the peer review process. So once you go to the peer review process, so which is a very good sign, you will uh, editor get the reviews and then they decide whether to reject, whether to accept or whether to give uh, an opportunity revised by the authors. And you go through this process until you get finally rejected or finally accepted. So I have one manuscript, uh, Merciv and Tiffany, we uh, all work with Dr. Um, Morone. 
And one of the pu uh, publication that I got uh, from uh, with her was ATRND, and that was went through six round of revisions. So we went through six peer reviews, thirteen peer reviewers. So it was a constant process of revision and review, revision and review. Finally, we get accepted. And for another journal like ET, um, BJET, they give only two two times for review, uh, two times of uh, opportunities. So when you get um, the revision opportunity and then you revise, and then if the revision was not up to the satisfaction standard of the editor, they will reject it right away. But ETRND was nice that they gave us, <laughs> they gave us a plenty of opportunity to re revise. So it depends on the journal. So it's very important that you know about the journals and what the journals require. So here is the journal selection and Dr. Bonke has already shared the, some list of it, but here is another, um, another list of journals and let me share this uh, in the chat box so that you can actually get, get it. Um, So this is the journal in the field and you can, the nice thing is you get the URL and you also get the length limit. Uh, sometimes if you need to go from 8,000 words to 6,000 words, it's a lot of work to revise it and shorten the paper. So it's, it's a good summary of each journal. And another thing is Web of Science uh, so this one, the nice thing about this feature is they have match manuscript feature. So what you are, what you need to do is provide the title and abstract. So let me let me try that because I have this abstract uh, manuscript that I'm working with. So I will enter the title and then I will copy and paste the abstract. and click on find journals. So what they are going to do is they will extract some keywords out of my manuscript and then match the results with the existing journals with their own keywords. So they are recommending uh, BJAT and they also provide a what, what, what Web of Science core collection, what index it, it is in. So Social Science Citation Index, SSCI, is the pre prestigious index. So you can see this is journal. It's listed in SSCI, and you can see the match score. And you can see the journal uh, page as well. So they recommend a bunch of journals that you can try. And another thing that is good is Kebels. And Kebels is not a free site, and, but I know at Indiana University, you can use it through the library. I'm not sure if University of Houston has it, but Sam Houston State University had it. So hopefully University of Houston had it. And this, so you can search the keywords and then you can find the information about each journal and what it is good. Uh, you can see the acceptance rate. Also, you can see the length. So also, you can see time to review and time to publication. This has not been collected, but let's look at the ETRND. So ETRND has 10% acceptance rate and you have one to two months of time to review and time to publication it really varies so it does not have it um, but what's good about this is when you are when you are actually working on your tenure track uh, tenure portfolio you can include this acceptance rate and to uh, signify the impact of your work and also you can see uh, time to review so if you need a quick publication, you can refer to these two uh, metrics to decide on with, uh, what 
journal publication, what journals you would like to submit your paper to. Okay. Um, any questions about any of this? Okay, moving on. So we are in the field of instructional technology. So I always think about how we can use technology to make my writing uh, as productive as possible, as effective as possible. So, so Dabe, let me, mm -hmm. so about Go two, ahead. three minutes. Can you do this part? About two, three two, minutes? Three minutes. Yeah, is it going to be long? I've, okay, I, I'll give you more than that. Okay. But I'll say try for two, three, it'll probably be five minutes. Yeah. Okay, got it. So, uh, writing templates in a Word document. Uh, in a Word document, you can find the writing template for APA styled. So, when you look at this, uh, this was actually created using the template. And when you have the template, what's good about this is like writing manuscript according to APA. Uh, I usually find it difficult to make headings, but if you have the template, if this is the heading, you can make, you can highlight this and go to home and go to style and make this heading. And it will, it will, it will be, it will be headed. It will create a heading. And, and uh, how many of you are using EndNote? Tiffany, I know IU has one. Uh, I'm not sure University of Houston has one, but uh, what's good about EndNote, it, had, it now has the app, uh, Chrome app. So if you are looking at this article and you need the APA style reference for the paper, it, this app will automatically uh, identify the PDF, locate the PDF. And when you click on it, it will find the full paper. It's taking some time to load. And then what you can do, you can just click on export to EndNote and it will automatically download the PDF file as well as you can see this is my EndNote and the EndNote has been, the EndNote file has been automatically downloaded so that it's saved on your EndNote as well as the PDF file linked to the reference. Okay. And another thing that I would like to highlight um, is Grammarly. So some journals, uh, some journals use UK English, some journals use USA English, and you have to make the adjustments when you change the journal. So what's good about Grammarly is it has the features of correcting your grammar, but what's, uh, what I like this about it is you can change your uh, English, type of English, so some journal like AJET, they require Australian journal and JET actually requires you to write in British English. So once you- Oh, that's this, why they rejected me. <laughs> <laughs> once, you, once you select this, then it will automatically change, um, identify some vocabularies that are not in their own grammar. So that it will make, you, make it easier for you to adjust it easily. Okay, I will stop here. <laughs> What's one thing that you didn't talk about that you would like to add? Do you have anything else in this slide deck that you think is important for us to hear? Yeah, uh, I'm. so what I really like about EndNote is when I cite, I can create a shortcut so that I can find it and just insert it right away. And I can choose different format, but I, to make it the most effective, most efficient, what I do is when I download the EndNote, 
I try to change my uh, shortcut key in references. So in the keyboard, the most um, frequent function that I use is insert citation. And I make it control and semi semicolon because that's the, the location that my hands find easily and then assign it so that I can make it quick. Okay, thank you, Dabe. Um, I must say, if you listen to all the chat in the background, um, you've got a lot of grit, mm -hmm. we would say. You've, someone said you have three etr &D publications. Recent publications, or is that in your lifespan publications? This year. This year. <laughs> 2021 yes, or yes. 2021. So I had two or three in 2020. I guess three. I guess, but I hadn't had one since 1996. It's been it was almost a quarter century since I published an ETR and D. Um, so having three in two in the first two months, three months of the year is pretty spectacular. Yeah. Um, either you're paying them a lot of money uh, on on the side. <laughs> uh, or you, you either you know somebody or you're working long hours so between well, yeah what go ahead I think being a reviewer helps uh, because you know the expectations and um, and you know better about the journal than uh, than being outsider so yeah that's true so etr &D is hard for those who don't really it's really hard and um, you know, they, they, it's a rigorous process and, you, and even then they, they might reject you. And then you went through six revisions. And as you mentioned Stacy Maroney, she's the interim dean of the School of Education yes, um, I heard. here at Indiana University. And she's the one who nominated me for the award I got tonight. So she's a precious oh. person. Um, so I wanna ask this, between you and Yul, you're publishing a lot and, and writing a lot. Who has the eagle eyes? Who can catch the most mistakes? You don't have to answer. I just so how many articles? Yes, Grammarly. <laughs> Grammarly. Grammarly is the eagle eye. So how many papers do you have in review right now? Um, I think three. And how many in pro press? I mean, I mean, in process, you're working on. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Okay. A lot, but making a very little progress. And and about Tiffany's tips about writing groups, I was not making much progress. And Tiffany was nice enough for uh, to invite me to her writing group, and it really helps. So yeah, I recommend that to anyone who wants to find the time to write. I, and I liked you pointing out the acceptance rate. And, and what tool was it that you found the acceptance rates in? Uh, KBEL. KBEL. Okay. So that's uh, critical. C A B E L L. Yeah. And the, and the time to review, that's critical. That's a nice resource. Someone's done a, an excellent job with that. It was also good to see you published with Unbe Lee. She's kind of a, a, an important person to you because she's your sister. Uh, <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to work with people you trust when you yeah. write. And, and who better to trust than, than your sister and your advisor, Dr. Regaluth? You know, that, Dr. Regaluth has been very successful in getting people to publish with him. And, and so if you have a, a mentor where you were in your university who's successful in publishing, pu try and publish with them because they, 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 they want to, if they've been successful in the past, they want to keep it going. And, and Dr. Regaluth one, was is one of the most prolific people that I know. Um, and Dr. Maroney is too. So you've been, you know, lucky to work with the, the, all those people. Um, so Susie, we should probably go to you and 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 back clean up here for us and and, and tell us <laughs> what, what you've been what you've been working on. Sure. So let's see. I'll use the same slide deck since that's where we are. Um, first, I posted this in the chat. Uh, my group is in uh, executive doctorate in health science education. And so while we appreciate, you know, all the connections to educational technology, um, there may be some other uh, good outlets for some of the work that they're doing. And so 
I have this list of some journals and the sections within the journals for health science education from 500 words to 3,200 words. So some of the shorter pieces, some of them have empirical data and some of them don't. So this is a good outlet for some of the theoretical pieces as you're working on chapter one, kind of conceptualizing what the problem is that you're gonna address in your thesis. When you're putting together your literature review, you can publish out of that. The synthesis of literature and the key themes you're finding on your topic, it can go into something like this and you can get feedback on it even before you do your defense, your proposal defense, an early way to get feedback. So I posted that link in the, in the chat. I just wanted to call recognition to it. So um, I wanna talk a little bit about our space and um, show you a few pictures of my writing space. So I haven't used this space too much. Um, this is the office at uh, UH. Um, because we've been mostly working from home. So this is the space that I am currently mostly using. And it oftentimes looks like this, which um, my littlest one, Zane, sometimes comes in, in in our class in the evenings. But it's, you know, it's peppered with other stuff that's going on at home, but we're doing the best that we can. Um, I guess the point is just to, to make use of wherever you are. So if you're on campus, if you're traveling, like Daniel, I know you've been doing some traveling in a plane, can be a good time to get um, some brainstorming writing done because you're disconnected if you don't buy that Wi-Fi um, or work on revi revising. So those two parts of the writing process I find are, I'm real productive on a plane or in a cafe, I'm having a nice cup of coffee. Uh, as a treat. Um, or, you know, and when I was in Africa, uh, almost two summers ago now, uh, riding in the bus until my laptop died, and kind of taking in that scenery and having it inform what I was writing about. I was writing about inclusive education. And so it was really impacting, you know, low resource areas of how we could support learning um, in, in this kind of context. So I find that my, my surroundings really feed into the enjoyment of my writing and, and my motivation. And I've talked to you guys about this before, but sometimes I just have to go to another place. Um, and for me, it's in nature to get over a hurdle of procrastination or you know, starting some section or revising something, just going somewhere and saying, I'm gonna be here for this block of time and I'm gonna get this done. And that really helps me. I've kind of synthesized some of the um, tips that my friends have presented so far, um, and as well as some of my ideas here. Um, the first is to create space for inspiration through beautiful design. And like Tiffany said, she likes simplicity, you know, clearing things off. Um, a beautiful, beautifully designed app is motivating to her. Um, in my office, I have this picture that I got from Waco that says, I'm going to make everything beautiful. That will be my life. And so that reminds me that even through my writing, it may start out messy, but as I revise, I'm making something beautiful come out of it. Um, the second thing is to create that writing space. And sometimes you have to self-advocate with your family, with your job. Um, you have to recognize how much time it's gonna take. And we've been working through some scheduling, planning uh, in our course about creating that space um, for us to produce in our writing. And then follow through, produce, be productive. Dabe did three ETR and D, which is a tier one journal article, journal articles last year. Um, I, I negotiated for that last year and even in my clinical position and I, I got two NSF grants. So I tried to follow through with the, the writing space that I'm asking for. Um, build networks for collaboration and writing opportunities. It could be locally it could be across uh, an organization. 
It could be even on social media. I think people that are interested in your own things. And Stephanie, you posted that link to the listserv for the education and health professions. It's a great way to get connected with people from um, across the world, really, uh, that are interested in the things that you're interested in. And it may have calls for special issues, may have you know, just opportunities that you could publish something that you're, that you're doing or might inspire um, some, something for you to start, a new project for you to start, uh, or a thesis idea. Um, and then get more mileage for your effort. That's, that's what Yule was talking about. So class papers, how do you turn those into um, publications? Presentations that you do, turning those into publications. If you write a manuscript, then do a presentation on it. Right, so get multiple things out of it. If you do, if you write for a grant, that um, project description can be turned into a publication. If you do all the work for applying for an award, those teaching awards have these huge finalist packets. Turn that into a publication, an innovations, a teaching innovations publication that you could put on PubMed or something like that. You can get multiple things out of uh, a single effort. I have to remind myself of that all the time, not just stop at the one thing. Um, there's some different tools that I use. Uh, when I was working on the book, I organized um, the, the book into a, a table in Google Docs and used hyperlinks within Google Docs so that I could uh, keep track of where, where the authors were and the different drafts of the manuscript. And I actually did the peer review manually like this. Um, but that helped to coordinate with my co-editor who was in Rhode Island. We um, rarely were in the same room together, but we worked for about uh, two years on this remotely and it can be done by using tables, spreadsheets, direct links, folders and subfolders to keep organized. Uh, we talked about planning and creating that space in your schedule. Um, looking for opportunities. Facebook, there's a lot of professional groups that post um, opportunities on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, but one of the biggest things that I've been really trying to do lately is knowing when those unfunded opportunities come along, you know, the invitations to speak, the invitation to serve as, you know, to, to do some data analysis, um, to, to help out with the writing of this piece you got to understand how many of those things you can feasibly do amidst everything else that you got going on. So sometimes it's yes, 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 yes. And sometimes it's how about no, <laughs> no, thank you. I have, I have, you know, enough that I think I can reasonably do and not stretch yourself too, too thin. So that's something I'm still working on. Um, because I'm, I'm a clinical faculty, my main responsibility is teaching. So I try to incorporate writing into teaching and so I write with students a lot of times. And sometimes that's like a practicum or um, an independent study that we do together, but we get publications out of it. And that's been real helpful. And when, we, um, when I collaborate, it's not just with students, I collaborate with, with a lot of different people, people who are interested in the same things I am. Um, and sometimes it comes out of dissertation, you know, working with a student, uh, here's Erwin, and virtually we have, uh, I see that. Familiar face, yeah. <laughs> and Erwin and Kurt and Sarah and uh, Bernard Robin uh, and I, we had a publication that came out of Erwin's dissertation in um, the Journal of Open and Distance Education. Am I saying that right? Aradal. Yeah, Aradal. Yep, exactly. So Open that, Access and SSCI. So it's a good journal. Yeah, it was a very good journal and it wasn't too terrible to get that turned into a publication. So that was really cool. And to celebrate. So um, when you get that publication, there can be, or you know, you get that paper done, um, take some time to celebrate and you could turn it into an award. There's awards for dissertations and for, um, for manuscripts, for books, for just being an awesome person in your field, um, for teaching, you can use the, your writing as part of um, an award uh, packet. So it's just a way to, to celebrate, or you can just go out and celebrate. Like uh, the picture on the left is Juanita and I going to St. Arnold's to celebrate our, 
our manuscript getting published in Tech Trends, and then it got selected for an award from uh, the Division of Distance Learning. So. Um, the students from Indiana don't know, St. Arnold's is not a church. <laughs> yeah, St. Arnold's Brewery. If you come to Houston, it's the place to go, so. Yep. It is the place to go. So I think that's all of the slides that uh, that I have prepared for today. Well, we've covered a lot in a, in a little about an hour and 10, 15 minutes here tonight. Uh, I'll point out a couple of things that you mentioned. One is pay for the Wi-Fi. <laughs> you get on a plane, you're a writer. You're not a reader, you're a writer. Well, you can be a reader of your own writing. Pay for the Wi-Fi, $10, $20, it's worth it. Pay it, just do it. Get going, get writing. Don't talk to the neighbor, don't watch a movie. Pay for the Wi-Fi. I, you know, you can get a lot done on a plane and you're away from everybody else. You're away from all that stress, all those stressors. You, your productivity per minute is gigantically larger than it will be at home per minute. So you may be looking at it and say, it's not as, I'm cheaper at home. No, it's not cheaper at home. When you get, you look at the number of words you're going to produce on a plane compared to being at home with other people or being in a cafe, whatever, just pay for the Wi-Fi. Number one. Um, you said, you, you mentioned being stretched, stretched. We're all stretched, but try and allocate one day to a paper. Don't work on five papers in a day, work on one paper, focus. Like Tiffany said, find ways to focus. That's how you're productive. You can scatter all sorts of thoughts to all sorts of different papers, but none of them are gonna get published if you do that. That approach just doesn't work so well. Um, now, if you're editing a book, that's a different story. You might wanna edit, three chapters in a day or three, you know, potential chapters and that kind of thing. Um, write all the time is, you know, write in a cafe, or write in a bookstore, write in a bus, write in a plane, write, write, you know, all the time, have fun writing. Y'all, I cut off early. Y'all, you have one thing you didn't get to say, or do you have a comment on other people's suggestions um, that you want to add to? Uh, I think I'll definitely, all of their advice is valid, but uh, at the same time, it's, it's, it's huge. So I just hope no one gets overwhelmed by the, uh, all these uh, tools and tips and information provided today. And just, just explore, just explore those options and you will see the perfect match for you like those uh, focusing apps and uh, project management tools. I tried different ones and I settled on my uh, perfect match. So don't, don't be overwhelmed and just focus on what is perfect match for you. So how many papers do you have in review right now? <laughs> what? And how many in your brain or in process? Uh, two or three. And how many ETR? No, no, no. <laughs> um, you know that's amazing. Uh, what what W has been able to do this year, and what you've been able to, just having one paper that you're working on and moving to another country. That's amazing, right there. You know, so applauds, big big applauds to you on getting a new job. I mean, you know, really, really, really. You know, um, that's that's not easy. Ewa Women's University is one of the hardest places to get into because everybody won't, that graduates from IU wants to teach there. That's Korean, you know, it's a top notch place. Any, we can, we have time for one or two questions before we, we have a question to, from uh, Melanie in the hey, chat. Go ahead, ask the question, Melanie. Yeah, I just was curious if you all had any tips on maintaining your stamina during that cyclical review process and ultimate rejection after rejection. Anybody want to comment on their stamina? Oh, I can. <laughs> I guess I'm the only one who have been rejected 13 times with one manuscript. I think I have a faith in the manuscript because I have done a great job. So I was like, if you rejected, then I will move on <laughs> and I will just keep moving on. And this is under review still, but I still uh, have a high hopes on this manuscript. So if you have done a great job, don't give up. Any other comments on stamina? It's an important topic. Um, I think knowing how long 
being attentive um, when Dabe was showing different processes for journals, it'll they'll tell you how long it usually takes from initial submission to publication. And ETRND's average is 450 some odd days. So when you're submitting to that journal, you are going in with the, the average is a year and a half, you know, I mean, over a year. And that's the average. That means some people are taking, you know, more than two years with, with that journal. So just when you go with that mindset, special issue calls too will say like, okay, we're going to have first review is hit this time. Second review is going to hit this time. So I put in something back in June um, to uh, a proposal to JRTE. And right now it, it should come out this summer. So we, I've passed the second round of reviews and the editor said, I'm not sending it out to anyone else. We just need to, you know, fix these, cross these T's, dot these I's. So you go in, I think with that and the time actually does pass pretty quick, but what's kind of nice is that when it sits out, you can kind of like a time to breathe. That's the best part actually is when it's under review because you're like, okay, it's under review and I can like, I can attend to this. It's when it comes back and they're like, we need revisions now. And they only give you two days for proofs, you know? <laughs> it's like, okay, I got you have 48 hours. It feels like mission impossible. Get the proofs done. Um, so as long as you just, you get, you don't know, you get kind of used to it, but that's why it's good to have a couple always in the pipeline, which is helpful. So yes, people ask me about my stamina and I tell them be an accountant for a week and you'll have stamina for the rest of your life, even a day be an accountant and any, any other day is better than that. So to be honest, you know, um, and, and, and that's from the heart, you know, um, but I don't wish it upon anyone. Okay. So number one, find friends that are good. You know, I mean, friends, I've published with someone in Korea, her name's Min Young Du. Maybe we have 10 manuscripts in like two years, six were published last year. She's just tremendous. There's no, no other word to describe her. Uh, and she gets, so, so we, so it's not just her, it's finding your role in the paper. I know my what my role is. I'm really good at writing endings. I'm good at writing beginnings. I'm good at with the, the lit with the literature review somewhat and with the references. And they're good with other things, you know. And so, I, by knowing what you're good at, after time, you'll you'll end up figuring out where where your role will be in different papers, and that will make it seem like you have endless stamina. But really, you you've selected certain pieces that you've helped with. You know, to, you didn't write the whole thing from start to finish. They've written part, and they, you know, you've all worked together as a team. It's a, you know, it's a team effort, and, and those teams evolve over time. And what roles people play on the teams, and then food. I have I, I get a load of berries, put them on my plate next to my computer, and I can't go upstairs to grab junk food. I got all these berries sitting next to me. I got to eat the berries. Got to eat the fruit. Gotta eat the good food. So protein shakes, whatever it is. That will give you the stamina, you know, really, if you, if you live well, I work out, as you all know, getting near 400 days in a row. Um, so, you know, having, you know, having that food, friends, and then fun, as Su Susie said, when you finish a paper, you have to have some fun, you have to frolic a little bit, you have to go to here, you go to Lenny's and have a, you know, a reflective drink, make sure that notion of two, two word phrase, reflective drink, you have to reflect on what you, you accomplish, it could be a the reflective drink could be tea, could be coffee, could be a banana juice, could be, you know, protein shake, or it could be my wine is done, could be, you know, whatever. So, you know, to, to ha you have to have stamina, but you have to, yeah, almost have to have, you have to make it look like you got more stamina than what you have. <laughs> because, you know, we all need sleep at some point. Last night, I took three naps before getting back to work till 4 a.m., <laughs> it was unusual. I take one nap sometimes at night around whatever time and, you know, get back up. You have to find your way. You find your way in all this and you're eventually going to find your way. You know, Tiffany found a way to be productive, right? Tiffany, you've got your way. Susie found her way. Um, you guys want to comment on what I said or no? So I had a paper that was published last week with Mena and Naja Sabar and... Um, Shuya Zhu and a couple of and Nisasari, and it took us six years maybe. We presented it at AERA in San Antonio four years ago, you know, and it was rejected. The people, ETRD e people said, submit to us. They came to our poster at AERA, I said, submit to us. We submitted, they sat on it for a year and then rejected it. 
It took our team though to revise it. it took us two years to get it ready. And then so, you know, you get these papers that took five, six years to get out. It's so rejected 13 times, I don't know about, but you know, it takes sometimes it takes five, six years. I, my first big paper at, when I graduated took eight years in the Journal of Accounting Ed, three years to review it, two years for me to revise it, three years, more years for the reviewers. And it's an SSCI journal, eight years, almost cost me tenure. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm bl blabbing up. We're, any final questions or comments? I think we're about out of our time. It's okay. like 10 o'clock for you guys on the East Coast. Yeah, we should go watch the game. That's so right. I, <laughs> I wanna thank everyone, but let me, um, it's been great meeting all you all, all you folks from Texas. Hey, uh, you know, my class, Amena Jew and I will present next Sunday at 11 o'clock an extension of this talk. I, I thought we'd break into two part. And so that'll start at 11 o'clock next Sunday. Your students are welcome to join. Um, if you find, if you, I'll give you the link, Susie. Okay. Uh, also, Tiffany, Jabe, you'll, uh, or you can share the slides with me so I can post them. So I want to give the final word to Susie and to Rob, since Rob got the big award tonight. So um, let's go with Susie first. Why don't you give a closing, whatever you want to say, and then Rob gets a final statement on our end. <laughs> oh, wow. A closing word. I feel like I've said a lot of words. Um, well, I just, I feel like you got to find the joy in, in what you're doing and it can be, the topic can give you joy, the interest in the topic, the people you're working with can give you joy, the, the outcome can give you joy. Um, it, it, you just have to find the joy in it. And sometimes you have to look harder than, than others, but um, that's, the right, you know, don't shy away from the writing part. There is joy in it, but just look for it and you can find it. Guess it's up to Rob. <laughs> First, I just want to quickly point out just like two minutes ago, Dr. Bomp said, all y'all, which we all as Texans know is plural for y'all. So that was awesome. <laughs> Um, no, the only thing I want to say is I, I don't have a lot of publications. I'm in a non-tenure track role, so I don't, I don't get a lot of time to write, but I do want to do more of it. And one of the things that I have become more confident about doing in the last few years is clawing back my time. I'll block big chunks of time on my calendar, uh, with no regrets whatsoever. And, um, just make sure that you are in control of as much of your time as possible. And it's been uh, kind of a, a miraculous experience for me. I sent an email to a person, this is about a year ago on campus. And she wrote back and she said, I don't have the capacity to do that this week, but I'll get to you as soon as I can. And I thought, you, you're allowed to do that? You know, it was like transformative because she was so in control. She knew what she was able to do that week. Uh, and I've, I've told her this before, and it's just, it sounds like the dumbest thing, but exerting control to give yourself room to do what you need to do. Not enough of us do it. So make sure that you do it. So there you go. You want to take us off the air with any final goodbyes, Rob? Oh, geez. Bye, y'all. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you very much. One. It was amazing. It was great Thank to meet you. you. Be good. Stop the recording. Goes to the